people, great, be our friends wherever you are on the face of this very planet. We welcome you to a very sober edition, a reflective edition, a memorial edition and commemoration of the lives of our soldiers, of our heroes, our mothers, our fathers, our uncles, our sisters, our brothers, our cousins, our relatives both distant and near that fell at the battlefields trying their ultimate best to defend the Afra land from the hordes of savages that invaded in 1967. It is a very sober day, a day of introspection, a day of reflection, a day of contemplation, and the day that spiritually we must within ourselves resolve to continue the very battle that they fought to its rightful conclusion with the emergence of a free Biafra. I welcome you wherever you're listening from. I know those of you in Japan, you have commenced. We also respect people in the Philippines, those in New Zealand, those in Australia, and all across the East to be able to commence their own rallies as well as we progress this very morning. The time now is approximately five minutes past 6 a.m. in the morning in the Holy Land of Biafra. The same number of minutes past 1 a.m. here in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States of America, where this program is coming to you live and direct and hopefully uninterrupted. My name is Nnam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, and by the grace of the Most High, Chukwukika Biyama Prumiyanine, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, because unlike any other indigenous platform, this world-renowned radio Biafra is received across the entire 24 time zones on this very planet. We are on FM, we are also simulcasting live on Facebook, we are on satellite, we are on Radio Biafra app, and we are also, of course, on Radio Biafra website, which is radiobiafra.co. Anywhere you go to, if you are lost, ask the nearest person closest to you. They should be able to tell you how to receive Radio Biafra. Today is a day of serious thinking and reasoning on the part of our people. And today, the entire Biafra land is locked down. Markets are not open. No, nothing at all. No schools, no offices are open. No banks, nothing. Everywhere is at a complete standstill and total shutdown. In respect to the memory of those that died that we live, without the soldiers that fought between 67 and 70 we will not be alive today we will or we would have become another version of the house race that only has a language to cling on to everything else about them has been obliterated from the face of the earth completely erased by the virulent colonization that went on unchecked many centuries ago that is what we are fighting against and in our time it will not happen i welcome you wherever you are regardless of what you're doing i know that some of you have not woken up this very morning but we have remained awake up until these very hours from here these early hours from here atlanta in georgia to bring you this very first of our two-part broadcast this very day because another broadcast will be coming up again at precisely 6 p.m in the evening 12 hours from now another broadcast will be coming from us here from the event center at the martin luther king center in atlanta in georgia usa 
we welcome everybody who is presently in Atlanta. We have come in from all across the USA and Canada as well. I welcome each and every one of you. We are now waiting for those of them that are actually domiciled in Georgia itself to be able to join us later on. We must proceed. And as today is a very special day, commenced with the candlelight vigil last night very moving very poignant very emotional i challenge anybody to look at the pictures and the videos that came out of the vigil that was held across biafra land and tell me they were not moved this very generation of ipub this very generation of hardcore biafrans we have done our duty and we will continue to do so. That posterity may not only judge us, but view us in a very positive light. We must proceed this very morning because those of them who allow their memories to be raised end up becoming extinct. We will not allow our history to be swept under the carpet we will not allow our enemies to dictate the pace of our lives. We will not allow our gallant and very brave soldiers, men and women and boys and girls that fought and died in our battlefields in our land, defending you and I to be forgotten. We will never ever forget them. Moments such as today, this very hour, this very day, at the rising of the sun in the Holy Land of Biafra, we dedicate this very 30th of May 2019, a very sober day, to the memory of our dear departed, our dead soldiers, our gallant volunteers that have been fighting very seriously to maintain whatever semblance of civility that is left in our people. With nothing save for their faith, they fought what was in effect a third world war. This very legendary class of 67 to 70 that we salute and honor on this very day and every other person that made it possible for the cries of Biafran children to be heard all over the world, people like Bruce Mayrock, that we also remember on this very day. Our fathers, our mothers, our uncles, our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our children and relatives, whose passing into the land of the silence we will by ourselves by becoming not only silent on this very day in Biafra land, but making sure that we sit at home to honor and respect them for the sacrifices that they made for us. On this very day, 52 years ago, hope was born. Although short-lived for about three years, it gave us a glimpse of what we should aspire for as a freedom-loving people, as a race beloved of Almighty Chukukika Biyama, Elohim in heaven. The sit at home today, which we are all going to observe across Biafra land, is a tradition born all the way back in 2014, at a time when our people appeared to have lost its way. A time when leadership without moral authority was forced upon our people to compel us to deny a grave historical injustice done to our people. Every other race on this earth that have suffered genocide have been recognized, at least acknowledged, if not celebrated, but at least remembered, from Armenia all the way to Rwanda. The 3.5 million officially documented death in Biafra land is the second largest genocide in modern history. We will not allow it to be swept under the carpet. The corrupt and inept leadership that resulted in our sorrowful and 
in the cabal of the damnable zoological republic to seek to suppress this very inescapable aspect of history we will not allow to continue therefore we must do what is right we must do what is honorable we must remember those that passed on those that fought gallantly and fell with nothing in their hands that fought against the combined might of britain of russia the conspiratorial presence of united states of america under nixon the oau and the arab league they all joined forces to fight this very tiny biafra and we will stood them for three years something that no other race has been able to do in the history of warfare at any time in human history therefore we must honor our people therefore this very day we must sit at home to respect those that fought and died for us and for those who have died and in whose memory we must sit at home today across the land we must pray as it is customary for us here on Radio Biafra and across the entire platform that is run by IPOB. Almighty and eternal God, Elohim, Chukukika Biama Plumi Henine, Adonai El Shaddai, from whose love and grace we, your children of Biafra, cannot be separated either by death or life this day 30th of may 2019 we ask you to hear our cries to hear our humble prayers and thanksgiving for all whom we remember that fought and died for the preservation of the afra and for the survival of the race of the nationalities that constitute Biafra. You will fulfill as in them, as also in us, the purpose of your love and bring us all together with your spirit to your eternal joy through your everlasting grace and mercy. You are a God of truth, a God of justice, we pray that your justice prevail upon the memory of the dead and the righteous yearnings of the living as we we'll battle through seemingly impossible odds to attain the peace and freedom that only you can bestow. We hold before you our glorious dead, gallant men and women who died in defense of Biafra and for the upholding of its ideals. We remember those that fell in Asaba, those that fought very gallantly in Abagana, those that defended Orca, those that barricaded themselves at war. We remember what happened at Owere. Not only was it taken once, but taken twice by the dwindling, very hardened, albeit war-weary Biafran soldiers. We remember those that fought at Okigwe, at Igruta, those that fought in Oron, those that ensured that Omaha was the last capital that defended it very gallantly. We remember all those of us, IPOB, that fell at Ndiyama River, those that fell at Igwacha, those that fell at Onicha, those that they buried in shallow graves in Opa. We remember the atrocities in Obibo, and we also know what happened elsewhere. As we honor their courage and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in the future that only you Elohim have prepared for us, and not in the future of man, a future of freedom and that of liberty. For you are the source of our life and our hope. 
everlasting father you know our hearts and how deep our sorrows are we are hurt by the death of those whom we loved we are angry at the loss we have sustained the unprovoked brutality and slaughter of the inner comfort elude us at this very point in time please turn our grief to joy our affliction to a dance of victory let your hope be rekindled in us please have mercy upon us so we will heal you and those of us who mourn, who feel numb and crushed and are filled with the pain of grief whose strength has given up you know all our sighing and longings be near to us O lord and teach us to fix our hope on you and on you alone and not on any man gracious lord do not abandon us in our desolation you will keep us safe in the midst of trouble and complete your purpose for us in this very life through your steadfast love and faithfulness. Our eyes are wasted with grief. You know we are weary with groaning as we remember our death. In the dark emptiness of the night, have mercy upon us and heal us. Forgive us our trespasses and take away our fear through your everlasting grace. Now and forevermore, we pray. He said, He said, He said, History teaches us that the truth must be spoken, although the victors in our case, being the British. And they are favored, Fulani Emirates of the North have rewritten our history. But we are here to correct it by speaking the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. There are a list of non Igbo officers, non Igbo speaking officers that fought during the war. They are Biafrans, they are patriots, because they recognize that Biafra is one held together by a bond of shared and common ancestry. We must honor all of them on this very day. The lies of the media, the deception of the government, the international conspiracy to subjugate and to obliterate Biafra from the face of the earth will no longer be accomplished because now we have IPOB and IPOB will defend our land to the probability. That is why we must honor the sacrifices of those who have gone by that their spirits may rest eternally. The war of genocide waged on we Biafrans by a combination of the British and most Western powers. This is the reason why we must resist every attempt by the oppressor to divide us. They cannot succeed in dividing us. Not now, not tomorrow, and not ever. Major General Philip F. Young was Biafra's Chief of General Staff and Head of State. He is from Akwaibom. He is not Hebrew. I repeat, he was the head of state of Biafra. When they tell you south or part of Niger Delta, you must repudiate such nonsensical and business argument with the very clear facts which have stood the test of time that Philip F. Young is not an Igbo man, was not an Igbo man, but he was the head of state of Biafra. Brigadier Willie Achebong was the commander of Biafra's very feared 58th Brigade. His major theater 
of battle was in Ikotek Bene. He is not an evil man. Colonel Insuda was the commander of the 18th Battalion and 53rd Brigade. His major battle was in Onitsha, where he fought alongside Colonel Achizia. That is a fact. Colonel Insuda was not an evil man. Lieutenant Colonel Franco Kilo was the commander of the 14th Battalion and 63rd Brigade. He was the one that fought at Igruta, 15 miles to Igruta, that the white man in Port Harcourt. He fought until the end of the war. Colonel Adigio was the commander of Biafra, 7th Battalion. His major battle was in Calabar with Lieutenant Colonel Okafo. We remember all of them. Colonel Adigio was not an able man. Mr. Enu Akban was the secretary to the Eastern Region and the Biafran government. He was not an evil man. When they come with their lies, when they seek to deceive you, when they seek to weaken you, you must remain very strong and resolute and continue to preach this very gospel. Do not allow them to dilute it with their lies that Biafra is one, never an evil affair, and can never ever be. Because these men fought and died under the banner of the rising sun. Therefore, we must remember all of them. We know about Franco Pigo. His history is well recounted, well rehearsed, and well written. The one that advised the Juku, our head of state, the everlasting commander of the armies of Biafra, that our name is indeed Biafra. We honor him on this very day. And he was also the commissioner for rural development in Yenagoa province. When people tell you we are a jaw, we are not Biafra, please remind them of Frank Upigo. Because most of them are illiterates. Most of them are not conversant with history because the truth must be spoken. A jaw is part and parcel of Biafra. They may seek to remove themselves if they wish to do so. But the birth of Biafra would not be complete without this very fine, noble Ijaman, Mr. Frank Upigo. We remember Mr. Etukin Ambasi, the Anang province administrator of Biafra, Mr. Ignatius Kobara, who was Biafra's representative in London, Dr. Gary Layton, who was the deputy head of the research and production department, Mr. Sam Ian, the communications expert with Biafra's directorate of military intelligence. None of them were able to we remember Mr. S. E. Moke, the chairman of the Rehabilitation Commission. We remember Dr. S. E. Koki, the Biafra's Relief Coordinator, Professor A. Y. Basi Ingham, Biafra's Calabar Province Administrator, Mr. S. N. Dikibo, Biafra's Degema Province Administrator, Mr. S. J. Idoha, the Province Administrator of Eket, Mr. Frank Ubut who is the province administrator of Ogoja, and also Chief J. Udo Afia, the province administrator of Uyo. We remember all of them. They were all gallant and fine beer friends. They are not Hebrew. That is why the lie that Biafra is about Hebrew people must be laid to rest today. As we remember these very fine gentlemen, that fought for their motherland, that fought for Biafra, and must be honored forever. As long as we live, we must remember them. Because when you erase the memory of victims of genocide, you erase the people as well. If you're looking for a lesson in history, look no further than the Hausa people. Today, Hausa doesn't exist only in language. Everything has been taken over by the Fulanese. All their traditional rulers are Fulani people. All their political leaders are Fulani. The only time they attempted to rise up was under Dr. Aminu Kanu. After the demise of Aminu Kanu, their destruction became even complete. Today is the 30th day of May 2019. We must remember the gallant class of 1967 to 1970. 
and all those that have fallen victim to the unjust brutality and calculated genocide against the Biafran people. We remember Gideon Akaloka and all victims of religious violence and intolerance in the damnable Zoological Republic. We hear the cries of those in the Middle Belt and besieged communities, even in Yoruba land. We cry for those that died at war three years ago. We remember other victims of state-sanctioned terrorism at National High School in Abba. Those that fell at Isiama Faruku in my compound on the 14th of September 2017, and many other victims of countless brutality by the Nigerian state. All of them we mourn, we remember, and we salute their courage on this very day. Today we weep and remember all of you. All of you that died in defense of freedom, not just in Biafra land but all across the world. Some of those, those in the grave today, in the shallow graves of Okwa, at Asanentu, those who were disfigured with acid bath from the Nigerian army, we will always be grateful for your sacrifice, for your heroism, and for your patriotism. Some who are still living, who claim that they are the leaders of our people, either through commission or omission, have abdicated their responsibility, but this very IPOB will never abandon our obligation to the dead. Some people have become ungrateful and unmindful of history to the point of working with the enemy, to the point of collaborating with our oppressors, and those people will pay dearly for it at the right time. They allowed the memory of our war dead to be insulted. Nobody thought about remembering them until this very generation came along because we must remain eternally grateful for all the sacrifices that you made to ensure our preservation as a race and as a people. Both those that fell in battle and those that fell victim to the unwarranted brutality of a primitive that all of you we honor you and this very day the 30th of may will be revered not just this very year but for eternity to all of you lying in unmarked graves some of them horridly dark shallow graves and buried our people in it all of you are our heroes those of you who were abducted, executed, and had acid poured on their faces to make it impossible for us to identify you. You are all in our prayers today and always will be. We live in hope that your bones shall rise one day through the glorious rebirth of the sacred nation of Biafra. The peculiar show of indifference by the governors in our region and socio-cultural organizations have over the years given rise to the disrespectful outburst of what I refer to as the Biafra genocide denial, not just by the government of the zoo, but by the British colonial masters and every major media outlet in the world. But as long as we live, as long as I lead IPOB, the soul of our brave heroes will rest in the assurance that we will never, ever forget them. This generation will never forget them 
This IPOB will never forget them. This Biafra will always honor their sacrifice. Amid the unspeakable horrors of Fulani terrorism, aided and abated by Britain, the dehumanization we have all suffered, the insults from those who should know better, the agony and the pains, the blackmail, the state-sponsored genocide on Biafrans, and the terror attacks on my father's compound, our obligation to our departed heroes, bonds eternal. We have remained steadfast, resilient, courageous, and defiant in ensuring we honor your memory because with your lives you ransomed ours. We talk of a not too distant hope and freedom in the land of Biafra because of the trail you blazed with your blood we have dedicated our lives to the accomplishment of that which you have started and this very chosen path of hope and freedom is one that must manifest in our time the story of those that lie today buried in graves some of them in places that we do not know is the legacy of Biafra. Their story we must continue to tell because they suffered and they died for us. In our quest for freedom, in our unarmed agitation, these are a message we pass from generation to generation. It is therefore the birthright of every child born a Biafran, as it is in other civilized nations, that we must recognize, respect, and honor the sacrifice of those that fought and died for us. By today's act of remembrance all over the world, especially we sitting at home, in, we cherish and nurture this very rare possession the gift that the departed has given to the living we prove an understanding both of its value and its cost we build a bridge across time to eternity for as long there is a biafran on this very earth we must remember them traitors collaborators and quizlings cannot stop us nothing the enemy does can stop us the gospel of truth exposing the plan of the islamic caliphate and the jihad the agenda to islamize will be put to shame because this ipob can never crumble we are unbribable we are unbiable we are resolute and we are determined we will keep on going until biafra is restored the islamic caliphate understand this very well that in ipob that the agenda has come to nothing they know that we have been right all along. They understand, as one writer said, the purity of our message. In Biafra land, their Islamization agenda has come to an end. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter how many collaborators they manage to recruit. One thing is certain, Biafra land can never be another Kwara state. Enugu can never be another Elorin. There is no way they can come into our land to convert us either by force 
or by persuasion because we are the children of the most high the children of light our mission in africa is to bring light and that we must accomplish in our time there is no space for islamization in our land not today not tomorrow not ever The government of the damnable zoological republic have been providing protection to Fulani headsmen, Miyeti Ala Cattle Breeders Association. The cowardice and the fear in Yoruba dominated media have allowed them to gain a head start on everybody else. And today, even the Yorubas are suffering it. If they come to their senses, they will avert a calamity worse than that their ancestors suffered in the Lauren and wider quarrel. Now is the time for us to close ranks. Now is the time for us to drive away the enemy. Now is the time to remember the injustice of the past and allow it to guide our conduct going into the future, that our race may be preserved, that the will of Elohim Chukuki Gabbam may preserve upon our lives. And on this very day, as you sit at home in contemplation, in prayer, and in supplication, for the repose of the soul of those that fought and died for us. Always remember the pain and the suffering that is to come. I cannot assure you that this very journey will be smooth all the way. As I have always said, they will kill us. We will kill them, but in the end, Biafra will come. I thank all of you very much. Those of you sitting at home, I encourage you to continue this very noble fight because in due course, even heaven will bear us witness. Thank you very much. And I will address you 6 p.m. Biafra time. From me, from here, it is a very early good morning.